Hey guys, Colby here. Welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is not my usual voice when I do my video, so I apologize. I am sick with COVID. I didn't upload yesterday, but I, I thought I, I should upload at least to inform everyone about this thing. It's the first time in three years that I'm ever doing this. So getting things started. Um, we have a fusion going on right now. It's August. RSL Helper is not working because um, Farbstop, the person who is the sole creator of RSL Helper, is away on holidays, which is as much deserved. And he said no updates for, for until he gets back uh, in mid-August. So until that time, we have no RSL Helper. We only use blue stacks to go through and play. And honestly, with how this fusion is going on right now i think it's the first time that i'm gonna say skip the fusion and relax have a month off and wait for what else it's gonna come by playing in the month of september to get people interested about the next the next fusion because we have these fusions every single month we had some good fusions in the past months we had helicat which was like the mvp i would say in terms of allowing so many players to be um to be able to do Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss and I've done takeovers before where Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss was like this because of just Helicath, no other champions. It's so, so cool to have those fusions be introduced to the game and I would accept those fusions to be more difficult, okay? I would accept that and I would say put more effort into doing those. Exactly like, uh, you know, pulling, you know, even your mystery shards when you want to do those um champion chase tournaments and the champion chase events or whatever they're called champion events all right those that need you to do shards but this fusion is by far the worst in terms of requirements not only it is a normal fusion where you need to level up to 50 those epics that you get so all of those resources the superior potions those the farming to get those champions to level 50 five star uh, the chickens required all that is still needed but to get the epics it's a, a big big amount of resources required for each event and this guy is not worth it Lona Thara, i did a showcase on, on this guy before there is nothing on his kit that tells me that this guy is good and i don't see them changing his kit at all maybe what i see is changing this so you will inflict more damage um when you're attacking with buffs and it's a it's a it's a team-wide buff. Maybe that's what makes him very, very good. I don't see them changing it, though. They haven't changed so many of the fusions that we had in the past. There were so many underwhelming fusions in the past, and now there's so many excuses for me to not go with this. One of them is I'm being free to play. I don't want to be wasting my resources. Um, the other one is the quality of this legendary and the difficulty of it. If we have a quick look at the events tab, so I'm not just talking out of thin air I've, I've went through every single one of these and i thought okay i'll wait until friday to actually give my opinion to everybody and it and it actually worked also because i was i am sick with COVID. and how i see this is like a a crazy attempt by playing to have people drain their resources before september um the fragments provided by winning the, the part where you have to win the, the certain amount of points for each player out there is insane because there's three, six different events where you need to compete. There's the tournament leaderboards where you get 15 points, 15 fragments, which is, I would say, nobody will get those. So you have 115 fragments left. Those 15 fragments that can be lost usually wear through champion chase tournaments or the... Um, summon rush events that's where you would lose those 15 fragments and that's how it looks like it's going to be again with the summon rush being the one that provides 10 at the start and then 15 maybe at a later part but one thing i'm gonna say i'm not gonna first um risk it with gambling whether plyum does this because the summon rush is going to be next week so by that time you'll have to do every single one of the events that are popping up and the second thing is all of this work for a, a legendary that is not needed uh, a legendary that doesn't really provide so much i I'm, I'm going against the company with this one i'm gonna i'm gonna be the first uh, to say uh, first time for me i think that i've ever said don't go for this fusion 
Um, unless you have a really big problem with Scarab, and I've done so many videos beating Scarab, he will not provide anything big. I'm honestly so, so against it. I don't know. I don't know. I thought that what they were going to do was going to be 25 fragments for each, for each event. And that would have been an easier way to get those epics, or at least if they provided the epics through a guaranteed um, uh, part where you would do the summons. Usually the summon chase would have that, or um, sometimes the champion training would have the epic being at the final part of it, where you would skip the whole effort that you were doing, and you would get the actual epic as a reward. So you would uh, basically not lose the time uh, farming for those four rares, and instead uh, just get the epic because you summoned so much. But look at this, champion training 5,000 points to get the 40 fragments. It isn't that high to do 5,000 points, I must admit. Champion chase, this is the usual 2,500 to get the 40 fragments. Again, the usual, but still you need to do this. You need to go to the 2,500 to get this 20 fragments. Um, I don't remember it being so much of a necessity to do them in the past. Um, I remember that you couldn't skip any of them, but again, we don't know how the summon event is gonna go. And then the spider tournament again, 2,250 for the 20 fragments, you get a five extra if you manage to land on the top, which is not that easy. Then we have the dungeon divers event, which this event, um, it's the usual, 3,000 points for the fragments, and we're going to have an artifact enhancement event, which should be at around the 4,000 points mark, if I remember correctly. All of these make me just want to say no. Um, I'm skipping this. I'm having my August off my summer off. I'm also sick with COVID, so I'm just going to relax a little bit with Raid. Just do my Cloud Boss, do my Hydra, and then I'm already thinking about purchasing the uh, Forge Pass that has just launched today because I think this has a new set which I want to test out on champions and this involves uh, more content creation so I see that as part of my job uh, instead of anything else or instead of just a guilty purchase I would say that usually shards. Before we close off the video I do want to say that some of the epics do deserve the effort if you're still progressing through your account. If you don't have so many of the resources to go for the summon rush so two and a half thousand points which is honestly a lot and then for the summon events which should be a, a big amount of points as well then you should go for one of these epics each epic has its own synergies with other champions where you can think of building a team behind them and very quickly i'll just go over anchorite which i believe is the best one of the lot here because he cleanses the allies on a three turn cooldown increases the duration of buffs this is very useful when you have multiple buffers in the team especially stuff like an ally protection buff shield buffs can be extended through this and you can utilize that to beat the scarab boss with this guy so again you can just use this guy instead of the legendary to finish off the scarab boss he also has a full heal of the target ally then places a 30 percent increased critical rate buff any 30% critical damage buff on all allies for two turns. This is huge, especially for uh, when you know you'll be going low. The buff is an added extra. The heal is also very good if you're lacking support. Then he's got an A1 that's an AoE, so you can give him a stun set and actually also benefit from the heal to your ally with the lowest HP. So overall, this, this champion looks like a very good support for the Sacred Order. Not that they need so much help with their support, but overall, Fantastic epic. Then this one, this one, I, I guess that he, she was going to be so good for the Hydra. And she is. Um, she's got an AoE attack when she has the counterattack buff. This will provide her two extra buffs there. You can have her as the target for the Mischief Head. I've already covered this. When I was going through the champions with uh, Chosen, she's got a block buff as an AoE. Not a 100% chance, so that's a little bit bad. Uh, but still, it's a solid choice if you don't have champions such as Ugo. Ugo is a fantastic defense down, block buffs, amazing kit, and an amazing support champion, support type champion to have um, when you're trying to build a team for Hydra. So she, she can work for that too. So already two good epics that you can consider if you're having issues with one part of the game or not. We have this epic Carlinia, which I didn't think was that amazing. There's the HP, there's the attack down. 
Then there's the strength turn plus decreases the reduct the duration of all debuffs and all allies by one turn. Then the strength turn, which is also a protected buff. Every time an enemy under HP burn takes a turn, decreases the duration of two random buffs on that enemy by one turn. So, uh, Yella Greena is one of the orcs. Increase attack, decrease attack as an AOE block buffs on a single target. So not that amazing. And a revive when she kills an enemy. So she's the least uh, interesting out of the epics already. The epics seem to be, um, you know, good for their own roles. I would say Anchorite is number one. Maybe this one looks to be promising. I want to test it out on the test server right now. And then finally, Wuji for the Hydra. This one is the sacrificial one where I, I wouldn't even put any effort. But fortunately, if you want to get the, um, the fusion, you have to go for it. So um, at the end, guys, this is, of course, your decision. I don't try to push people to any direction. I just give you guys my thought process behind it. And as an experienced player with some resources saved up, even so, I'm still not going for it because I don't think it's worth the time and the resources that I'm going to be wasting because those sacred shards would have been depleted for this one. And, you know, we've seen the rate of guaranteed champion events that are popping up. So it's not something that was unique or will be unique. They understand the uh, the thought process behind people who just keep pulling shards, but they also want to get people to keep pulling shards. So they give those guaranteed events all the time and we'll, we're bound to see more void guaranteed events soon ancient shards sacred shards all of those will keep on coming to the game anyway this was the video guys i hope i did not annoy you with my voice and i'll see you guys in the next one see ya